I am uh, looking at fiber art, uh, sculptural art from the 60s and 70s and how American artists were looking beyond the borders of the United States and Europe uh, for inspiration in their own work. And so that allowed them to achieve some really amazing formal innovations, uh, but at the same time, there are also problems of cultural appropriation that uh, occur when those acts of borrowing happen. And I think those those tensions of this thing that's really productive and making us see something in a more global light, um, but also has consequences for these less powerful groups that you're borrowing from, that's something that we see in the media every day. Um, and so I think going back to this earlier moment and looking at that and how that really happens through materials um, is something that I'm interested in now as a research question. So a lot of people ask me if I have a studio practice and uh, it's kind of an interesting moment where I get to explain to them what it is that art historians and craft historians actually do and make. And so unlike uh, makers and, who are, and crafters who are using uh, clay as their medium or fiber as their medium, our medium is actually the, the art that they're making, right? Um, so I can't do what I do. I can't practice my, uh, my scholarship as an art historian without those artists because the raw materials that I'm working with, it isn't clay or fiber, it's their artwork and interpreting that in its cultural context uh, and drawing out uh, its its theoretical implications, its political implications. Um, so there's a really interesting synergy uh, happening between, I think, scholars and artists, and uh, that is something that the Emerging Voices program, I think, has really fostered. I think my biggest ongoing challenge has to do with terms of audience. Uh, when you're a scholar, you're working for this very elite, uh, insular community that has its own vocabulary and uh, I would really like to reach a wider audience than that. So the question then becomes how can you balance this very specialized body of knowledge that you've been creating in your research um, but bringing that to a wider public and navigating all of those channels of exhibitions and publishing um, to make sure that you're not sacrificing any of that specificity but also uh, reaching people who can use uh, what you've discovered for different purposes. I think a lot of people define success as uh, something on individual terms. They think about themselves reaching an individual goal. Uh, but as a scholar and an educator, I think we have to have a more collaborative view of success. Uh, rather than running a race and trying to reach the finish line yourself, uh, I have to think of it more as a relay race where you're uh, developing and advancing the a body of knowledge as far as you can and then passing the baton off to the next person and then they're pushing it as far as they can because one person can't know everything. Uh, so I think success is really just doing your part in that relay race and uh, you know, making it so that somebody else can go even further.